kill myself. And so I stopped, I stopped when I realized that. The abundance of prescription medications created a new income source for kids, selling their meds to their schoolmates. It's called Kitty Cocaine. They take the Ritalin and they just repackage it and they sell it on campus to the kids because it's like speed. I figured like, if I was gonna do drugs, I might as well make it worth it. And I ended up doing street drugs and then I ended up getting into it really bad. We're looking at um, marijuana and other things as being gateway drugs. And actually the, the so-called medications are a greater gateway drug. The Ritalin drugs are backfiring big time because if the child is already disruptive and he takes cocaine, He's going to be a lot more disruptive after he's taken it. It is not going to calm him down. Boom, she got on the drugs and her personality changed, her behaviors changed, they became erratic and dark and violent and uh, it, it was just a nightmare. He kept having adverse reactions, becoming very, very angry. He could not control his behavior. He couldn't control his temper. He was on five different psych meds, Prozac and um, lithium and he was seven years old, and he was unable to function. He would have rages and then crying and, and all kinds of um, just violent rages, grabbing knives and all of this. The list includes 15-year-old Kip Kinkle withdrawing from Prozac when he shot 22 classmates, killing two after murdering his mother and stepfather at his home in Springfield, Oregon. 18-year-old Jason Hoffman on Effexor and Selexa. And he opened fire at his California high school, wounding five. 15-year-old Sean Cooper on a mix of antidepressants when he shot students in Idaho. And 17-year-old Eric Harris on Luvox when he and partner Dylan Klebold killed 12 classmates and a teacher in the bloodiest school massacre yet, Columbine. And all of this overshadows the very reason children came to school in the first place, to get an education. Since 1970, the United States has fallen from ninth to 28th place in worldwide academic standing. While during that same period, the number of American school children labeled with learning disorders has skyrocketed, and the sales of ADHD drugs have multiplied 32 times. Children don't ask for psychiatric drugs. Children don't ask to be diagnosed. They don't want to be called crazy. So you ask to ask the classic Roman question, legal question, cui bono, who benefits? The people who make the diagnosis. Psychiatry should actually go into government, that politicians should listen to psychiatrists. Psychiatrists should be in every parliament and should direct and monitor political activities. Psychiatry, in little more than a century, has infiltrated society on a global scale, and not by accident. People aren't aware that in 1940, a prominent British psychiatrist, Colonel J.R. Rees, addressed the National Council on Mental Hygiene and set the agenda for psychiatry for the next 60 years. Since then, psychiatrists have been given authority in nearly every sector of our society with tragic results. We must aim to make it permeate every educational activity in our national life. Public life, politics, and industry should all of them be within our sphere of influence. We have made a useful attack upon a number of professions. The two easiest of them, naturally, are the teaching profession and the church. The most difficult are law and medicine. Reese's colleague, psychiatrist G. Brock Chisholm, co-founder of the World Federation for Mental Health, later expanded upon psychiatry's plans. To achieve world government, it is necessary to remove from the minds of men their individualism, loyalty to family traditions, national patriotism, and religious dogmas. To implement their master plan, 
American psychiatrists convinced the U.S. Congress that mental illness was a national threat that only they, with vast increases in funding, could solve. And thus began massive U.S. government expenditures for psychiatric research, which have climbed from $1 million a year in 1946 to $1.4 billion today, an increase of more than 139,000%. As psychiatric influence spread across America, it also spread throughout the world. Behind crisis after world crisis,